thank you to the entire care team. You've been tremendous. And of course, Brother Bio, tremendous gratitude to all of you. I'd like uh, for people to take off your shoes um, if you are willing, if you're comfortable doing so. And rather than simply feeling the surface below, I'd like you to bring in your corporeal intelligence. So inviting your feet to perhaps conspire with the surface beneath them. Rub your feet on the ground, the surface, um, spreading your toes, noticing if it's wood, if you have a sense of the materiality of the trees, if it's linoleum, um, you have a sense perhaps of the petroleum plastics that went into that process of uh, laminating your floor, or if it's ceramic, tile, um, again, the sense of earth. Um, if it's industrial carpet, knowing um, perhaps some of the processes that went into creating that carpet, or even a, a rug, a beautiful Turkish rug, and thinking of the people perhaps who made those knots. And we will start as your Toes are open on the ground. We will start with the first video, please. Where are you from? Where are you from? No. no. Where are you from? Really? Really? Where are you from? Really? No. Hey man, where are you from? Where are you really No, where are you really from? No, I mean really where are you from? No, where are you really from? Wait, no. No. Where are you from? No. Really where are you from? No. Where are you really from? Where are you from? Where are you from? No, where are you Where are you from? Where are you from? No, where are you really from? Where are you really from? Thank you. So I'd like you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so and visualize yourself as a nine or 10 year old sitting in perhaps a school playground watching me the same age as you, a very small Arab Jewish Sephardic girl with big curly hair and colorful clothes. And you're watching the way the other children are responding to me. They come up to me and put their hands in my hair, looking for horns, assuming that as a Jew, I am a Jesus killer, therefore of Satan. They mock my clothes, my jewelry as gypsy-like and gaudy, my voice and gestures, opinions too big, completely out of place. So notice in your body as you're watching this, as you're encountering this, perhaps empathizing, perhaps not. These children encountered my Jewish otherness as danger and as a reflection of the abject. My mother and I were clearly displaced, seen as foreigners trespassing on US territory. They would ask, where are you from? And then demanded, no, where are you really from? This was my first embodied understanding of the relationship between individual experience and the greater whole, the vulnerability of my supposedly ethnic body and the vulnerability of what is considered my natural environment. And during this process, this is when I learned the relationship between cultural diversity and biodiversity. So I'd like you to open your eyes again and putting your hand on your heart and your hand on an object, an object that you may consider inanimate, um, an object in your space, um, perhaps a pen, perhaps a book, perhaps your eyeglasses or your even your digital device that you're looking at right now. Uh, so a hand on your hand, hand on one of the objects and we'll watch the Second video, um, and the I'll give you a quick description of the outfits I'm wearing, the costumes. The first one is made of 
the one you just saw in the previous video too, is made of VCR tape, uh, mylar, intensely uh, toxic metals, um, obviously non-biodegradable metals that carry stories. And they're Mobius stripped loops of these uh, VHS tape ribbons. So that's the first costume. The second that you'll see in this video also is a fiber shed vest. So it's made from 30 different fiber shed community um, weavers of yak and llama and goat, um, rabbit fur that is uh, woven and produced in our bioregional social permaculture. So if you can start the second video, please. Instead of the underlying racist, xenophobic, ethnocentric, and anti-immigration implications of the question, actually the double question, where are you from? No, where are you really from? Instead of those questions, that question being directed at people who appear different from us, the supposed us, I'm suggesting what a thrill it is that we should be asking, we could be asking, we must be asking this question about the objects in our daily lives, the objects that we take potentially, that many of us take for granted. When this double question is asked to people, what we're, do what we're doing is turning these individuals into objects. However, when we ask this question to objects in our daily lives, we are witnessing those very objects as subjects. We're taking on eco-theologian Thomas Berry's challenge. He says, we must say of the universe that it is a communion of subjects, not a collection of objects. And we must be attentive to moving beyond subject-object binaries and remember that the universe is made up of stories, not atoms. In the reader, Bernard Schlink's novel about love and dignity in the face of the Holocaust, there is a scene where the main character confronts the cruelty of indifference as motivation for murder. Human beings considered useless can be carelessly disposed of. As a child of a Holocaust survivor, it is particularly horrifying for me to witness how industrial civilization continues to harness apathy and contempt of difference. My ancestral memory, my cellular memory, tells me we must reconsider waste in terms of symbiotic kinship. A pencil, a rubber band, a square of toilet paper, a fruit tree, a family pet, a friend, a human friend, or a stranger in a distant land, all connected to us as kin. What if we didn't see these objects or subjects? What if we didn't see them as superfluous? What if we actually understood where they could from, where they came from, their meanings as valuable, where they came from and where they collectively they are going? I'm asking you to imagine the impossible. Imagine our epigenetic potential, a profound shift in how we are evolving, in how we can co-evolve. Thank you for showing that. When you are touching with your hand, both your heart and the object that you have chosen and playing with the fox in The Little Prince who reminds us that what is essential is invisible to the eyes. Going back to Cliff's uh, radical tenderness, can we hear with our other body parts in addition to our ears, the same thing with our eyes. 
and with a somatic cognition of what is beneath our feet. I saw in the chat that linoleum is not uh, petroleum based. Thank you for the correction. Um, but the sense of where, whatever, whatever it is that we're standing on, where that did, what the stories were in those objects. There's a proverb from my people, uh, Ladino, the uh, hybrid language of Ladino, the Sephardim, who have been considered Black Jews over the centuries. Uh, Ladino is um, a 15th century or actually 14th century Spanish combined with Arabic and Hebrew and whatever other languages where the Jews had been exiled to, those the languages of those countries. And the proverb is the uh, camel does not see his own hump. So when we are touching with our cellular memory, with our ancestral consciousness, these various objects, what is it that that elic elicits? Uh, so I'd like us to think about oikos, the uh, root of economy and ecology, eco, oikos meaning home. And how does that feed into that, that consciousness of home in ecology and economy, how does that feed into our somatic cognition, our cellular memories of what it is that we are touching both with our hands and our feet at this moment? And referring to playing with, let's say we are trickster withing, um, tr trickster withing the idea of a cybopath, cybopath, the uh, history of the food that you taste in your mouth when you uh, bite into a banana, for example, you know somatically, not in your neocortex, but you know as an intuitive ancestral consciousness in your cells, um, whether the banana came from um, a, pl a plantation that perhaps was the food was grown with uh, DDT that had been exported, banned here in the United States and then exported to the global South you know the supply chain, you know the embodied energy of that food. And what if we were to begin to evolve uh, with that kind of cellular consciousness, that sensorium relationality, where objects themselves are verbs, where the embodied energy of the object, we have a sense when we engage with it, with our sense of relationality, where objects are not ensouled under our gaze, but rather as, as, commodity, as commodities through commodity fetishism, through habituated obedience, but rather, again, as I mentioned in the video, they, their stories are told and we listen, we know because of this epigenetic potential, we know how to listen to this, this uh, these imbricated stories, a toroidal, um, enfoldment of stories that makes up the universe, where the object is a process of continual non-arrival and ever becoming, becoming a reality that eludes knowledge and moves beyond both objectification and the subject having a subjecthood, where we're moving beyond those two realms and we enter a sense of the indefinite, as a place of parenting, as a place of being consumers, as a place of being in a kinship commons. And for the breakout session, um, I'd like you to think about what could you in your daily lives begin to internalize as the embodied energy of where those objects, quote unquote, where they come from, where that knowledge isn't, again, it's not a cerebral knowledge, but it's a cellular knowledge. It's an ancestral technologies knowledge. So if we could um, move into uh, breakout teams, please. Yeah, Kara, could you put that um, prompt into the chat before people sure. go anywhere? Yeah, let's see. I'm actually having some technical challenge um, finding the chat. If if I could dictate it and someone else would write it in because the, the chat function is not working right now. Sure. Is, is, is that okay? So for, for the prompt, I'd like you to conspire your 
individual and collective epigenetic potential in the context of where do you come from? And for those of us who might not fully comprehend the enormity of this question, yes, like, uh, that's like with yes. words like epigenetic, I'm wondering if you can just help us, um, if you were imagining someone for the first time hearing this, how might they respond to the prompt? Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, so thank you, Jordi, for, for asking me to, to clarify and to move through this differently. Um, so because of habituated obedience, Socialized norms are so deeply ingrained in us, as 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 the Hamel the, the camel hump tells us. Um, what if we were able to change how our cells engage with the world around us, where it wasn't um, just based on what we think we know, um, but what we know is our ancestral technologies as those ancient wisdoms so the epigenetic potential would be where we would we would be evolving collectively this kind of being this kind of collective um, understanding of what it means to be alive and what it means to be in relation to one another okay did i dig us in further or or, or climb climb out a bit or both no, I'm with you. Um, okay. I'm fully with you. I want to, before we go out, I want to make sure we can enable the chat and create a little room for folks to ask questions if they need clarification further. Sure. Um, before we head into our groups. I, again, I can't see the chat. So if, if any of that could be translated for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I can read this now. Um, and textually, so I do see one question that just popped up for some reason, um, verbally or non-verbally. Um, I'd like this to be verbal, but textual too. So if you could write down and I'll, I'll be presenting the next couple of Sundays also. So um, people are more than welcome to reach out to me. I don't know if it was put in the, um, the chat, my contact information, but um, I'd love to, to be in, in contact with people. Um, about this very question over the next few weeks. Hmm. And again, and one person should... asked for an example of, um, yes. yeah, to exemplify what you're talking about. Maybe, yes. maybe that would also help. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So for example, I've never owned um, a, a car or let's say a, a smartphone. So I have to figure out what does it mean for me to operate in this world as a parent of a of a preteen of a 12 year old um in a way where i could imagine a different evolution i can imagine what would it mean to be in this world that wasn't necessarily car dependent we have relationships with cars or we have relationships with smartphones but our habituated obedience our evolution doesn't depend on these two uh, normative, these two, these two hegemonic forces in our lives. So we are open to that on a, on a profoundly visceral level. And it means imagining, again, conspiring, because I'm asking you to do this in your group and individually um, over the next few weeks, imagine a world that doesn't distill our sociality, our relationality into these boxes of normalcy, in this case, a car or a, um, a smartphone. So, so that would be one example of shifting our, because our genes are now, we are, we have adapted, right? <laughs> we, we, uh, we the, our expectations, our bodies and our environments, as bio reminds us, um, the, the line between environment and our bodies is not just fluid. We are, there is that mutual edibility of, of body and environment. So what if our epigenetic potential our moving beyond the, the, the genes as they are 
what is that potential? And that's what I'm asking for people to imagine together, to conspire. Thank you. So I, I hear in what you're sharing, there's even a few steps perhaps before we just dive into potentiality. Yes, there's a moment of one honoring all that you've shared in this session, uh, the way that you've been moving, what you're holding, your story. Um, and people are also coming to even ask those questions of themselves. Um, where I prompt of where are you from? Um, you know, elicit so much, uh, so much to consider moves beyond the visibility that moves beyond um, our own prehension of ourselves is exploring, diving deeper into what is that? What is this really? Where do I come from? Those coins are still iterating for me. And again, where where do the objects come from? What is their supply chain? When when I pick up this pen or this pencil. What kind of intimacy do I have? The interspecies intimacy. And what I'm suggesting is, is when we begin to ask these questions of these kinds of supposed objects, these supposed inanimate objects, and we begin to hear their stories, that we begin to decolonize our own psyches and bodies. That's a, it's a simultaneous, it's a, it's a dialogue between where we come from and where. Beautiful. Is it okay with you if we simplify the prompt and we just ask people where are they from and we let that be the practice that we go into? Of course. Um, because I'm, I'm conscious of how, um, like we wanna, we wanna go all the way and we wanna flow. And I'm sensing there's a lot of questions that are emerging and just for the sake slowing down the process um, and you can respond to that in whatever feels most honest and from art um, for them and maybe we'll be going into the epigenetic potentiality if that's where we are and maybe it's simply um, just a, a glimpse into some slice of where they come from Absolutely, absolutely. And I did, for some reason, one chat popped in and it said that sounds like there are multiple questions. And absolutely, yes, there are, mul these are, these are embroiling questions. They're, they're nested. Thank you. Okay, so in the chat, where are you from? Um, and I invite you to answer that in whatever way is true to you. Um, and if you don't want to share, that's all fine. Blessings on that. Jason, if you would send us out. And we're this is going to be very brief. Um, so levity is encouraged. Um, to not share is also share. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.